Hey guys, this is Mechtogic. Welcome back to another video of the Translucent Plastics Archive. This is a playlist where I'm going to be showing off my collection of late 90s and early 2000s Translucent Plastics products. Now this one that I'm showing today is one that you probably already know. It's the Atomic Purple Game Boy Color. <laughs> yes, the classic. Well, let's talk a little bit about this from a design perspective because you can find tons of videos about this, um, talking more about other elements of it. But the Atomic Purple Game Boy Color is the most famous of the Game Boy Colors, I suppose, in the translucent realm. Um, you can see that it's got a really beautiful uh, finish. It's quite transparent. It's a lot more transparent than some of the other products we talk about here. But uh, this one, you can see through it. You can see clearly little bits of the motherboard and the rubber footings that the rubber uh, spots that you know are underneath the keys and things um, or the buttons I should say and on the back you've got you can clearly see the battery compartment if I take the batteries out um, kind of makes me want to get really nice aesthetic batteries when I have a Game Boy Color like this because you know design is a huge part of this kind of product so you've got a clear uh, battery compartment and you can see all these elements down here as well of course, it's just a really cool thing for what, when you were growing up in the 90s to see how the, not quite how it works, but get a sort of sense of what's inside your Game Boy. Really, really useful from an educational standpoint, but just also really cool. Felt very high tech, you know, this felt like the future. But I wanted to talk about the Atomic Purple uh, naming because that only occurred in English speaking countries. In Japan, this was always known as Clear Purple. There's something I want to make clear. Um, it was known as Clear Purple, not Atomic Purple. And this wasn't the first product to use Atomic Purple either. And that's why I wanted to talk first about the original uh, Clear Purple Game Boy Pocket. So here it is. And if my camera can focus, yeah, here it is. And let's compare it to the Game Boy Color here. Is there any color difference at all? No, it's, I mean, if you look carefully, it's, it's basically the exact same color. This was the first of the clear purple products though. This one uh, was released in late 1997. It was a Japan exclusive and it was called clear purple and it was sort of released to sort of celebrate the uh, winter season in Japan. It was, um, yeah, as I said, it was called clear purple. So it wasn't atomic until the Game Boy Color came out and later the um, Nintendo 64 as well. But the design language is exactly the same here. It's very, very muted. It's not like a very bold, aggressive, translucent plastic color. Uh, it's very subtle, I think. And I think that's why people really love this. It never really, it doesn't stand out like a neon color tone, but it also doesn't feel like it's just so see-through that you can't really, it, it's just like you're buying a skeleton product. You know, some of the earlier 90s products were just skeletons. You could just see straight through them. They were just clear plastic. This is really nice blend of the two. You can, you can see everything inside, but you do have to look a little carefully to see them. And I think that's what's so, so nice about the um, Atomic Purple color scheme. I think that's why people really liked it. Uh, of course, the Game Boy Pocket also was released around the same time as the Game Boy Camera. But, uh, and here we go. So here's one of the Game Boy Camera in Atomic Purple as well. But because this was, again, only a Japanese exclusive, this is not a, there was no clear purple Game Boy camera. This is a Japanese one. And of course, in Japan, they called it the pocket camera. But it's a perfect color match to the Game Boy Pocket. So I love, I mean, I think a lot of you love when you have a color matched accessory. It really just adds to the whole feel. It almost feels like this was meant to be a camera in the first place. And of course, the pocket camera swivels back and forth. There's no translucent element to the top part here. This is the same as just the rest of them. Um, which is a little bit beige and of course may start to yellow over time but the overall design is really nice you can see inside the camera as well get a little sense for how it works maybe maybe not maybe you don't know what the heck any of this is but there it is and of course the pocket camera can be used with the Game Boy Color as well just fine like that but it's in Japanese <laughs> all the uh, text inside this inside this one is in Japanese of course but just letting you know that that did exist so here you are, the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color in Atomic Purple. A few other notes just uh, in terms of aesthetics, which I think are just worth talking about. 
the Game Boy Pocket has a flat bottom, whereas the color has a more rounded bottom. And I think that's part of the late 90s trend of sort of making everything a bit more curvaceous compared to the 80s, which are a lot more stark and flat and uh, straight. You know, think about the NES controller compared to the N64 controller. Think about Apple's 80s mice compared to their 90s mice. Everything just had a more curved look in the, um, in the 90s. Of course, that has the disadvantage that the pocket can actually sit flat and stay there, whereas the color obviously can't be really sat flat anymore. Um, Game Boy Color also has an infrared sensor. I don't want to talk much about the features because you can look at those up themselves. Though it is important to note that the Game Boy Pocket actually had a larger screen than the Color had, and the Pocket also was far less uh, intensive, only taking two AA, AAA batteries compared to double A's in the Color. But one thing I want to talk about, which probably will get be me a bit of controversy, is that. I really don't like people who mod these. Um, this was the original design aesthetic, and I feel like changing it is is really compromising on the whole the whole idea, the whole historical value of these as devices. I do get that people want to get out their Game Boys and have a backlit screen. I understand that people want to do that, but I wish that people would do it in a less invasive way. The Game Boy Color, part of its design is that small screen. I mean, you can't you can't really escape that. If you make it look bigger. It just feels wrong to me. It feels like the proportions are just out. Um, it's, it really means a lot if you just try and keep things minimal. And just if you want to add a bit of backlighting, then sure, but keep it to be not invasive. Don't try and ruin the whole product and change the look of it just so you can enjoy your Game Boy a bit more. If you want to do that, then you know do it to a trash Game Boy, but not to a, one that deserves to be put on a shelf, you know, in a collection. These are still quite common, I must say. So people are happy to do it because they probably don't realize that they're starting to get that they're getting rare. They're probably not that rare yet. The pocket is clearly more rare than the color because this was only in Japan, as I said. But eventually over time, we'll start to find that these get more and more rare. Though they are really great devices in the sense that they don't really break. There's no components in them that are gonna really get destroyed unless you just you know expose them to water or rust or you know all those sorts of things. Generally, there's no really great component failure that I know of in these devices. They're really well built, really sturdy, the plastics feel really good in your hand, and uh, the color scheme, as I've said, is really beautiful. So, there it is, Atomic Purple, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket, and of course the pocket camera that goes with them. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive, and stick around for more videos because we've got a lot to see.